It's time for my fifth YouTube CMF series, this time based on Ruby. Ruby is a pseudo anime show that I recently got into, having just finished volume three. So I've made this series based on those first three volumes. Two things have been done slightly differently for this series. One, I tried to design as few new pieces as possible, which was not an easy task. Two, I had significant help with this one, from a friend of mine scream named Pilikar. He was the one who got me into the show, and he helped make the list and characters parts list. So if there's an ingenious part usage, thank him. Onwards. You can't have a Ruby series without the main character, Ruby Rose, so of course she's first. This whole thing started, actually, while I was messing around in LED. I noticed that the Lego Ninjago movie Lloyd's hair would work great for Ruby, and here we are. She also has mid legs, the Minnie Mouse skirt, and a cape. Her accessory is, of course, her scythe, Crescent Rose, built with four pieces, one being a new blade piece. Next is Weiss, who I think looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, she has a new side ponytail piece, Minnie Mouse's skirt, mid legs, and comes with a rapier to represent her sword. Next is Blake, Team Ruby's resident emo. She uses Olivia's old hair piece with a new bow piece. Her accessories are a katana and a 1x3 tile for her sheath thing. One thing you'll notice with this series is that instead of using straight anime eyes, I've opted to color them instead, which is why Blake's eyes are yellow. To round out Team Ruby, we have Yang, Ruby's older stepsister. She's one of my favorites of the series, actually. She has a new hair piece designed to go over the new Lucy scarf from the Lego Movie 2, and she comes with gauntlet pieces introduced by Ultra Agents, I believe. They aren't perfect, but they get the job done. Next to Sauspin, Beacon's Headmaster. No new pieces here, thankfully. His hairpiece is Harry Potter's new hair in gray, and his accessories are a coffee mug and a simple cane. McGonagall to Ozpin's Dumbledore is Glinda Goodwitch. She has two new pieces, actually, a new hair mold and specialized cape. Her accessory is the weird wand thing she has, made out of a 3L bar and a tassel. General Ironwood is next, again, not using any new pieces. His hair is the new-ish Superman hair with a simple goon gun in gray. He's also one of the few characters to not have colored eyes. He's also incompetent, so there's that. At number 8 is Roman Torchwick, one of the best villains. I have to thank Peel specifically here for pointing out the Riddler hair hat mold from the TLBM sets, which works exceptionally well in this instance. He has doll molded arms and a new cane. Finally, we're getting to the best characters. Team Juniper starts with its fearless-ish leader, Juan. He turned out very well, I think. He has Luke's hair in blonde with Wildstyle's hood and two weapons, his sword and shield. Juan's the best. Next is Nora, Juniper's resident explosion waiting to happen. She has Cole's Ninjago movie hairpiece in orange, has a pink skirt and completely brick-built hammer made with eight pieces. Pyrrha is the best character, hands down, and hopefully I've done her justice. She's one of the most detailed figures here, using Mia's old hair with some printing, dull molded arms, a brick built spear, new shield, and new waist thingy. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll go back to being sad. The last member of Team Juniper is Ren. He has a new floofy hairpiece with a printed pink streak, and his accessories are two guns introduced in the Man of Steel sets. They aren't perfect for Ren's guns, but they get the point across. Sun is a fun character, so his inclusion made sense. His hairpiece is a common one, and his gunchucks are made with Count Dooku's lightsaber in red. He also has a tailpiece, due to his faunus heritage. Neptune is another fun character that I really wish had more to do. His hairpiece is the zombie businessman Zendajur, and he has the alien conquest gun with binoculars built that was once prevalent. Very, very prevalent. He's one of the few characters to have a double-sided head, one with his confident wink, and another with goggles down. Ah, Penny. Too pure for this world. She has a new hairpiece molded with a bow, a printed skirt, the skydiver's backpack, and a jade blade in gray for her preferred weapons. Okay, another best character is Crow, Ruby and Yang's uncle. Once again, I think he turned out well. He has the dog trainer's hair in black and uses Thor's Ragnarok cape in dark red. His sword blade is a new piece designed to fit over a regular bar. Moving into the enemies that are gathering, we have Mercury. He has Kai's hair in dark gray, a shuriken, and doll mothered legs, for fairly obvious reasons. Emerald is a fun enemy who I wish we got more of. 
She has Nia's hair and teal, red anime eyes, and two blasters, but with the Lego Batman movie gun thing and two claws, both in olive green. Neapolitan, Roman's assistant, is next. She's a fun design, and incidentally, I was eating Neapolitan ice cream while drawing her. She has a new doll molded hairpiece, penguin's umbrella in pink, mid legs, and a skirt attachment. The last figure is Cinder, the big bad. She has the fitness instructor's hair in black, a dark red skirt, and a power blast. She also has a double sided face, showing her powered up fire rage. And once again, we come to the end. Here's the full group shot. I'm really happy with how this series turned out, and hopefully you are too. One of the weirder problems I had to deal with was in trying to make the designs more... Lego... appropriate? Which I think has worked. Hopefully. Anyway. And here's the packaging. That's it. Thanks for watching, and please, like, comment, subscribe, whole shebang. If you do, it shows that you like the stuff I've made, and I'll be inclined to make more. And I'm pretty sure the next series will be Young Justice series too, but you never know. Also, I don't usually sound like this, I've just got a bit of a cold. Oh well. Later.